June the 10th. Lake level is about 920 and three quarters. A water temperature is high 70s to low 80s, depends where you're at on the lake. And there's a lot of different things going on on the lake. The fish are kind of in a full summertime pattern. Uh, be catching some fish on spoons, some on drop shots, some on jigs, just a little bit of everything. It hadn't been real easy certain days, you, you know, you still really got to work for them. But I'll kind of get into the light line bite first. I found my best drop shot bite. Uh, seems to be the mid James and from about Baxter up to Shell Knob. And what we're fishing is a lot of flat, long gravel points. And they seem to be fairly shallow early, you know, 22 to 25 feet, pretty close to the bottom. Then as the sun gets up, that seems to last pretty good till about 8 o'clock, 8.30. Then it starts getting a little harder if you don't get any wind. Once that bite there ends, you know, where the fish are fairly close to the bottom, I've had to locate some suspended fish. And some of them have been out in front of docks, out off of bluff ends. Some have been out over deeper trees. But I'm finding them suspended anywhere from 25 to about 35 feet. And the bottom depth is kind of irrelevant it really doesn't matter the key depth is where you want to be keeping your bait and that's about 25 to 35 feet and i've been catching them on a lot of different worms but it seemed like the most consistent one has been this uh dream shot the strike kings uh morning dawn but i do throw the the brown purple laminated of chompers quite a bit uh i've got something that a buddy's oh you know hand pours for me plum works real good but i like a lot of the the plums and kind of the red hues seem to work good. Uh, a lot of the lake still, you know, got some stain to it. It's by no means dirty. But down by, haven't been down by the dam for a few days. I was down around Kimberling today. And the spoon bite is a couple of different spoon, types of spoons and types of structure we're fishing. Today we caught some fish around boat docks and we had, had a few good fish. And what I'm throwing around the boat docks, it's kind of the same we do every summer. The one that works the best for me out around the docks, the deeper docks, is usually a three-quarter ounce, just a slab spoon. Uh, this is a homemade one, but like a War Eagle will work real good. I know uh, Jewel makes one that will work good as well. But I like white, and we're usually throwing these in the dock stalls, around the boats, early in the morning, you know, the fish may only be about five feet deep. But once that sun gets up, you know, having to fish it down to about 25 to 30 feet. And a lot of how I do this spoon, if I like to fish the docks that go out into the channels, whether it's in a creek or on the main lake. But usually the end stalls are the best ones, and they may be 50 to 80 foot of water. But I'm usually only going to fish about 30 to 35 feet deep. If I do fish in towards the bank more, and once I get to about 35 feet, I actually pitch the spoon back in as far as I can get it, you know, over the boat lifts, under the boats, and let it go down the bottom and then work it back out of the stall. Uh, now that bite, it doesn't work all over. There seems to be isolated docks year after year that consistently hold fish. Like I say, some of them are on the main lake, some of them are in the creeks. And what seems to be the key difference is what's underneath the dock. Normally a good dock will have like a channel swing that comes in or out, you know, either swings in or swings out. A little timber underneath it on the real deep docks, if it's 50 to 70 foot deep, if it's got some timber it's coming up to about 30 foot, those can be good docks as well. Now another type of spoon that you can use in doing that same deal is like a uh, this is a Dixie Jet, a 5.8, you know, anywhere from a half ounce or a three quarter ounce flutter spoon. And you notice I like to stay with the, with the white, seem to work the best for me. Now the bigger spoon, this is the one uh, James Watson come out with, the worldwide uh, spoon by James Watson. It's a lot bigger spoon, and I'm fishing it more up in the river and on channel swings where flats come up against it. Now, I'm fishing a combination of baits out in that same area. And, you know, I mean, you know, channel swings, uh, wherever your main creek is, whether you're in a creek or out on the, the main lake or main river, 
you'll have long flat points and you'll have you know channels to come up against one side or the other. When the fish are fairly aggressive, they'll be up on the tops of these. But once that, like I said, once that sun gets up, it gets a little tougher. Look, start fishing the breaks. And every situation is going to be a little bit different as far as how deep a break you're looking for. Depends how much stain you got, how far up the rivers you are, and where the bait fish are. And you know, it'll change on one point from day to day. One day they'll be up 10 to 15 foot, the next day they might be 25 to 35 foot on the, in the same area. But usually what I like to do with this is I'll let it just kind of flutter down to bottom on a semi-slack line. Once it gets down to bottom, I'll rip it real hard you know, three or four feet, let it flutter back down. And normally your bite will come as that spoon's dropping back down after you, after you rip it. In the same area, we're also throwing a couple different swim baits. Now this has got a, a revenge swim bait head on it. This one here has a scrounger type swim bait head. Usually on the scrounger type heads, I don't worry too much about a paddle tail because I feel that I get the action out of the lip of the scrounger. So I don't worry too much about putting a paddle tail on it. Now, on just a straight swim bait head like this, you notice I got a big old hook too. That's a six, maybe even a seven odd hook in that. Uh, the fish we're catching on when we do get a bite, you know, three to four, four and a half pound fish are good quality fish. Not getting a lot of bites, but there are some quality. But like I say, I like the paddle tail on the straight head like that, give the bait a little bit more action. And this bait you can fish kind of similar to the spoon, let it go down to the bottom and rip it. Or what I've been doing is uh, with my pan optic, my live view or live scope, I can, a lot of times I can see how deep the fish are and I will drop that bait down to 15 or 18 foot before I even start to reel the bait. And then I'll just reel it in real, real slow. Every once in a while I'll stop and pause but when you make a long cast and, and you're counting that bait down, the whole time it's dropping, you want to keep a taut line. And you want to do the same like a, whether it's a football jig or a Texas regular worm. A lot of times you'll get bites from them suspended fish before the bait gets to bottom. But the swim bait and the spoon, you know, you're kind of having to fish a lot of different depths in the water column. But a lot of the key is with the electronics that, that we have, you can actually see what depth the fish are at, you know, in the bait. Same areas, if the spoon or the swim bait's not working, like I said, I'm mixing up a lot of different baits in the same areas. I've been throwing, we just got these in, oh, about eight or nine days ago, but I've been throwing a, a five fish ultimate cover jig, and this is a three quarter ounce, Basically, what we've done is we've designed this jig to try to replace the football jig, and it's doing a real good job. You know, a football jig doesn't come through the brush and the cover real well. But anyways, this particular one is brown trout color. I've got a Zoom speed car on there for a trailer. Now, you can use a multiple different baits. You can use a, I've also been throwing a, a three-quarter ounce green pumpkin orange pig sticker football jig out there as well. If I'm not quite as deep, I might go with like a 9 16 ultimate finesse jig. And a lot of the colors are green pumpkins, browns, uh, Okeechobee craw. And crawdads got a lot of red in them. So I'm still using a lot of red flake in my trailers, whether it be like a, a Strike King Baby Rage craw, Twin Tail Chompers, uh, Pocket Chunk, something with quite a bit of leg action. But I'm fishing this. Kind of going back to where it's fishing the swim bait and the spoon on a lot of the same areas. I'll cast it up on the top of these points and down the edges where it rolls off till I can get a bite or two. Then, you know, if I seem like I'm getting a bite in 18 or 20 foot, then I'll try to keep the bait in that depth range, in that strike zone area a little bit more. Uh, sometimes they're coming around brush. Uh, the fish seem to be more relating to the depth in the rock excuse me, more so than they are brush. But, you know, there's been a little bit of top water bite too. We had a bunch of fish surface in this morning. All around us, we couldn't hardly catch them, but they were, they were surfacing. I don't know what they wanted to feed on, but it wasn't what, what we were throwing at them. But we threw some uh, walking type baits and a red fin. I think the guy, I didn't have any flukes rigged up, but a lot of times when they get fussy, 
when they're busting like that and they won't hardly hit a hard bait, try a fluke. Uh, and a fluke is a lot of times what I'm using. This is a, a caffeine shad, but uh, a big fluke will work too. That's what I use a lot of times on the scrounger head is a fluke style bait, whether it be a strike king or a zoom. Uh, and also, you know, you can throw a magnum shaky head out there in place of a jig. But a lot of the fish out there on structure, you know, they're anywhere from 18 to, to 30 feet deep in the river arms. And down lake, I am catching some, you know, 35, almost 40 feet deep. That thermocline's getting down deeper and deeper now that they're not generating that much water. Seems like they only have, a, you know, a couple generators running most of the time right now. But, you know, like I said, you know, even through the heat of the day, you're still able to get bites. Uh, just try to stay hydrated. And what I've been trying to do is the boat traffic gets too bad. I head to the creeks or the rivers where it's not uh, quite, you know, as busy out on the main lake. But the last few days hadn't been bad. It's been pretty quiet out there. So until next week, uh, good luck, good fishing.